Hi, welcome. I'm Jesse Walters from Charles Ruttenberg. I'm here today to um, talk to you guys about new listings I have coming up. They are not on the market. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they're um, they're extra special because you know uh, the market is limited inventory right now. So we do have some listings coming up. Um, I have one I'm going to show you the pictures of. I actually have a couple, but I'm going to show you the, the first one. Uh, I've got some pictures of it, and it's located on Gracie Lee in Spring Hill. Um, this home is a three-bedroom, two-bath, and as you can see, the pictures are great. Um, that's the front of the house. Uh, the, little, the openings on the roof part there on that tile roof uh, is an actual like an open porch area so you can act, you know on the front you can enjoy the porch area um, as you can see that tile roof is just beautiful and it's just an immaculate property um, this is a living room area with like a step down actually in it too so uh, the the pictures look really white but it's more like a beige color inside and there's a small palm tree but yeah you can kind of see the beige tile here there are the larger tiles um, you have some new carpeting um, some new granite in there, backsplash. Uh, the color of the cabinets is like a, it's like a white, a um, little bit of an off-white. You've got a fireplace, the wood beams, uh, you know, just basically open plan. And this huge kitchen, which you can serve right out those windows to your back porch area, uh, brand new appliances. And again, the wood beams, and you can kind of see out in the back, it's located on 2.38 acres, which is really nice. It's one of the bedrooms. This bathroom here has granite. Um, it's just a beautiful bathroom with the really nice granite. The actual, the granite's nice. There's another, another bedroom, good size bedrooms. This house was built in 1983, which has the nice large uh, bedrooms. You know, some of the new ones now, the builders put the bedrooms so small. Here's the back porch area. Um, that back porch is about 345 square foot. So that's a nice area. And as you can see, see the granite there, that which is continued from the actual kitchen. So it's more of a bar, like a serving area there. So you can put the food right out if you're entertaining. So it's a great home for parties. Um, here's the side of the house. And then there's a back area for more, you know, if you want to have um, just different things outside for entertaining, there's more pavers down and area there. Um, but you can see the back area. There's the pavers up close. And again, like I said, it's 2.38 acres, which is really hard to find these days. Um, here's a side view of the home. And um, again, the tile roof looks great. Look at, the, look at the land. We don't really see that. And then a huge garage. So you have two different um, garage doors on there. So it's an oversized garage area, which leads into an inside laundry room, which is real nice. And I don't actually think I have, an, I don't know if I have the laundry room fixtures on there or not. But you can see this side of the house with the fireplace. Um, it's just immaculate, the, the actual grounds and stuff. This home is eight, uh, built in 1983, and um, it is 2,298 square foot, so like 2,300 square foot of living area. This is a blue bathroom. Look at this. Look at this granite. Isn't it beautiful? That's a really hard to find um, granite. It's the color of lapis, so it's beautiful. And when you see it in person, it's even better. It has a little area in the master bath there to actually go outside too, which is real nice. And there's the laundry room. And of course, you got to have granite in your laundry room. I'm jealous of this laundry room. Um, they have oversized tile and actually, um, you know, granite too, which is really nice. But you can see the entrance of the the uh, driveway, how long it is going up. You have lots of privacy, long driveway. And here's the aerial shot um, from the drone. You can get the whole, you know, prop, like layout of the actual property and stuff. But it sits far back on that lot, which is nice. Um, so you're not right on the street. Uh, and it's an actual, those lots out there are very, very nice and stuff. But again, that one is a single family residence. And it is on 2.38 acres, built in 1983. Um, the asking price is going to be around $450. Uh, we haven't, uh, you know, put it in stone yet because it is not listed yet. That's a property that we just have coming up. Um, and it says Spring Hill, but it's actually between 52 and um, County Line Road in Pasco County. So it's a nice location uh, for jumping on the Sun Coast, heading towards, you know, if you're, if you're going to travel to Tampa and commute, if you're working in Tampa, um, it's an easy run that way. Or if you're going to Clearwater, it's uh, just at 52 to US 19. So it's a nice centrally located area. Or if you're thinking of airports, if you travel in and out of state a lot, um, that's a great house too because, again, you can go State Road 52 or 
uh, Caneline Road to hit the Sun Coast and head up to the, you know, the actual um, Tampa Airport. Um, so it's in the East or St. Pete Airport. It's really, really a great location. So that I have that house for sale coming up. And um, it should be in the next um, the next two weeks uh, coming up and everything. But we already had the pictures done. And we're ready to go. Signs got to go in, and then we're all set. And um, of course, we need some paperwork signed, which we have most of it. But we're just waiting for the seller to tell us. Uh, you know, they have one more thing to do. I think he's painting the garage floor, so that's why there's no pictures of the garage um, or some drywall or something in the garage that he was just uh, painting and stuff. So we have probably two weeks, and then we'll be you know, straight up on the market. I have another one coming up. Um, this one is a condo, and it is located in Seaforest Beach Club. Um, I actually sold this one to her, uh, and in the beginning of um, when she had, let's see, what was it, 2020, like 10, no, actually October 2020, I sold her this property. Um, and of course, we know that these properties have gone up, um, but she uh, needs a property closer to her work. So she's going to go ahead and sell it, and we're uh, going to put this on the market within the next, again, two weeks. She's just moving some things out of it, and it's a two-bedroom, um, two-bath, one-car garage, and those are really neat because they're, they're three levels. So you walk in, you have your garage area and a porch area, and then you walk up to the main floor, and there's bedrooms upstairs too, um, but there's also a nice back porch on there on these units as well which obviously you can't see in this picture. Um, this, this one will be approximately around 265, which we're going over that right now. But these are, these are homes that are not on the MLS. You're not gonna find these homes anywhere unless you call me and I can set you up an appointment. We can, we can go look at it. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and um, list it, like I said, soon. This one, um, there's also, oh, you know, this is, which is really, really uh, great. There's also, um, it's called Sea Force Beach Club, um, and it's located off US 19 in Pasco County in Newport Ritchie. Um, but this home is located, you know, and of course, like I was saying, in Pasco County. So you have like the lower uh, tax rates than, say, Hillsborough or Pinellas, which is great. But you also, the HOA fee that you pay, you also um, are part of a the uh, Gulf Harbors Beach. Um, access. So you can actually, they have their own little private beach. Um, you go to the guard and you show them your card that you're, you know, part of the membership and you don't have to drive from there. The nearest beach would be either uh, Fred Howard Park, Green Key Beach, which is a very small beach, or um, Hudson uh, Beach. But, but you're going to have your own uh, private beach there and um, it's about five minutes from this condo. So you will have to get in your car and drive there, but it's going to be your own private beach like I said, five or 10 minutes from there. And, and, and like I said, there's a guard. Um, it's only for that actual community. So your HOA is gonna be, um, it's gonna cover the grounds exterior out there um, and that beach club too. It's gonna have the extra membership for there, which is gonna be fantastic as far as, if you've ever been out there, it's a nice little beach. Um, in fact, my brother, um, his boat broke down and uh, I had been there you know, several times before, but his boat broke down and he actually got stuck at that little beach and it was quite nice and we actually did get him and save him and hang out there. You know, the guard was real nice and let us in. And, but um, I pulled the, I'm a realtor. Uh, <laughs> my brother's broken down his boat here, but anyway. Um, so that, uh, that condo is, uh, because I was saying it's brand new, it's 2018, but um, it was brand new when she moved in it. So I want to say they probably got the, um, certificate of occupancy or the CO on it in 2018, but it was ready to go and brand new at the time she moved in, and she moved in it um, in October 2020. So this unit is absolutely immaculate inside. Uh, it looks like no one has lived there because she literally moved in like a month and then moved back out. So it's gonna be um, just really, really immaculate. So if you want a new condo, and, um, you know, because the, the ones that are brand new look exactly the same, but they are more expensive. This one's, um, you know, going to be bargain price compared to the brand new construction and the limited inventory on that brand new construction. So those are condos. Like I was saying, the living area on that one is um, about 1,500 square foot. So uh, how those go are you got your living area on one floor. So you got 750 square foot. 
Um, then you have your upper story, which is 762 square foot. Um, so those, that 762 and 750, approximately like 1,500, 15, 1550 square foot. And then you have the garage area, which is 290 square foot. And then there's a finished storage area there too. So there's extra area downstairs for you to put your, um, to put storage stuff in. If you have a lot more than you think in this 1,500 square foot, you know, boxes, Christmas, stuff like that. It has a nice little area when you walk into the garage, this huge, um, like I was saying, this area, the finished storage in there, 144 square foot. So what is that, like a 10 by 14, you know, so I mean, a pretty good size area. So 144 square foot there. And then on the back, there's 18 square foot um, finished um, uh, open porch. And also upstairs, like I was saying, there's a nice little balcony um, that you can stand on. And I don't know the exact size of that, but um, that, you know, it's, again, it's um, like a pretty good size area. And I think I said two bedroom, two bath, but it's actually two bedroom, two and a half bath. So, um, and that's a, that's a stucco concrete um, unit um, as far as the, um, there's wood frame, I think, upstairs, but the bottoms on the actual, uh, the actual garage areas, those are all concrete blocks. So it's a real, you know, real good structure. And it's, like I said, almost brand new. So that, <clears throat> that's a nice little unit and stuff. And then also, let me tell you what the, uh, sorry, I got to put my little thinkers on here. Um, so the HOA is approximately, um, and I'm going to have to verify this with her, but I want to say it's approximately like 200 a month. And that's going to include cable TV, um, there's a nice community pool. I forgot to mention that. A nice community pool there, um, which you can go into. Grounds maintenance, pool maintenance, of course, and recreation um, facilities. Um, you got a fitness center, and then and it's gated as well too. So, um, and it does say on this one water access. And the reason it's saying water access is because you're going to get that Gulf um, Harbors Beach Club as part of this um, special amenity for this community. So. That part's nice. So you have a private beach. There's actually a dog walking area. There's a pool. There's a recreational place. It's gated, so it doesn't get much better than that. Um, and there's also like a little pond area in there, which is real nice and stuff. So it's a picturesque community. Um, I think, you know, if you're looking for a two bedroom, two and a half bath, I think you'll actually be pretty pleased with this one because it's a, you know, like a townhouse style. Um, but then you also have your amenities and all that. So it's a great, a great, uh, you know, actual uh, area. Again, that's Seaforce Beach Club. Um, I have another one coming up too, which is, uh, I don't have a picture of it yet. Um, it's in Inverness. So I'm not sure if any of you guys like or want a home in Inverness area. Um, it's about 800 square foot. Um, and it is a two bedroom, one bath mobile home and single wide mobile home. Um, this is a... Um, home that needs a little bit of work. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I want to say 1974. I forgot to bring the year. It's either 74 or 78, but it's a, um, an older home, uh, older, older mobile home. It's on its own land, about a quarter of an acre. Um, and again, we're still in the pricing area, but it should be around 80,000, a two bedroom, one bath, which, you know, you can't, it's really hard to find anything for 80,000 right now. So that one's a nice little mobile home. Again, it's in Inverness. I'll be listing that one next week. So if you have a, some type of, um, you know, uh, person or a friend or yourself who is interested in Inverness or a rental property um, in that area, just give me a call. Again, it's not on the MLS yet. So, um, you know, when I, uh, when I get it, let's see, I'll have it Friday. So I'll probably have it on the MLS next week sometime, Wednesday or Thursday. So if you want to call me, you know, obviously, or email me, my information will be up, and I can get you the address and stuff on that. Um, and then I also have another one coming up. It's a three-bedroom, two-bath in Spring Hill. And um, this home is a um, newer, uh, it, like closer to 2000, um, the home itself. And that, that home is located in like the Spring Hill Unit 9 area, which means that it's located off of Spring Hill Drive, Deltona, in that area, or Mariner, between Spring Hill, uh, Mariner, and Deltona in that block area, which is the unit, Spring Hill Unit 9. And that's a, a great house. Uh, they're relocating. And so we're just doing some just odds and ends there. 
as soon as that house is out, it should be around the 250 mark. Um, again, we're still in the process of listing the house, but if you guys are looking for something in three bedroom, two bath, you know, I do have that actual property coming up. Um, I have a couple other ones coming up, but they're not until probably six months out on larger lots. Um, those, the two that I have actually pretty close together are located in um, Newport Ritchie on um, bigger than half acre lots. So those are quite nice, you know, nice properties. Those are going to be around the 300 mark. So if it's something that you're looking for and you're not ready to go yet, but, you know, first of the year or March, uh, you're going to be looking. I have those two properties coming up as well. But I want to talk to you guys all about the inventory I have coming up only because we know it's limited inventory. So it's better to kind of see a property you like, you know, and, and wait for it than to, you know, be depressed because there is no inventory in the area or with land, you know. So those are great properties. I'm trying to think if I have any other ones I forgot to write down. But right now, um, there's a couple uh, more which I can't give out the actual information on because they're kind of iffy whether they're going to um, list or not. They're on the fence. They're on the real estate fence right now. So, but And I also have a city in Newport Ritchie, one coming up in there too. And that's a three bedroom, two bath as well. And again, that one is going to be three to six months out. So it's city in Newport Ritchie, three, two, um, no pool. But um, those homes are real nice. It's a real nice area in um, downtown Newport Ritchie. Um, you know, it's where all the festivals and everything are, and they've opened up the parking garages, um, just a lot of different things going on in that area. There's no HOA in that area. Um, the city of Newport Ritchie keeps a good eye on it, though. So if you're, you know, if you're um, looking to purchase in the city of Newport Ritchie, you're going to be able to keep the value of your home up because city of Newport Ritchie, they literally do have a, um, people that go through the neighborhood and make sure there's no fascia hanging off properties or debris in your yard or you didn't, you know, mow your yard, stuff like that. They're actually really starting to keep up after that area. So when you drive through, it's again, picturesque in the, in the downtown Newport Ritchie area. Um, I do have one um, coming up in Tampa um, that is a fixer upper. Um, it's, a, it, it's a foreclosure, well not foreclosure, it's a fixer upper. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it without, Basically, um, it did have squatters, and the windows are boarded up. Um, that one's going to be available. That's going to be a nice home for someone who wants to do an investment, a flip property, or someone who wants to live in Tampa and put a little money into it and get equity already in your home, elbow grease. Um, that one I have coming up again in the next two weeks. And that one um, did have, like I said, squatters in, so it's been boarded up. But I'd be glad to um, give you guys the address as soon as I, uh, you know, get the listing and stuff, which will be in the next two weeks. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about the uh, most popular beaches next in um, Florida and give you guys a list of the top 10 beaches and things to do there. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, we were just talking about all the listings that I have uh, coming up. And um, I have a couple extra that, like I said, I can't release the addresses and stuff yet. But um, if you guys are looking for anything and you're just not finding it, give me a call. And again, my contact information will be up and stuff. But we were just talking about, you know, moving to Florida, why everybody wants to move to Florida. Um, the best Florida beaches. 
So um, there's all sorts of contests. Um, you know, I know Honeymoon Island and Clearwater Beach come up a lot in those contests. Uh, but I actually reviewing and like researching the best Florida beaches, you know, someone has to do it. Someone has to go to each one of those beaches and make sure that they're appropriate and great for you guys to go to. So number one beach actually in Florida right now, um, when they, let's see, who is this? Best vacations in the U.S. news, um, the ranking for Florida, Destin actually comes up number one, which is, um, which is funny because, you know, we are always like Clearwater Beach, Clearwater Beach. But I think, I don't know if it's just because Destin's, uh, like, less traveled. So it's, you know, because um, Clearwater is so, like, popular and, and populated now. But um, Destin comes up the number one beach. Um, Destin's going to be more towards your uh, uh, north Florida. So, uh, you know, you're going to get more, like I said, the natural natural beaches, more up that way. So, oh, whoop, I'm dropping my glasses. Um, so anyway, it's okay, I can see. Um, so then the next beach that comes up number two in the state of Florida would be Sanibel Island. Have you ever been to Sanibel Island? Oh my gosh, those beautiful, beautiful uh, beaches there. And what's nice about Sanibel is um, it says island because you go over a bridge, obviously, to get there, and you're in this area. It's so beautiful. Um, is it pricey? A little, it's a little bit pricey, you know, if you're used to, say, um, you know, if you're from, say, Destin's going to be less expensive than, than you're going to, than Sanibel Island as far as when you go there to get a hotel and stuff. But again, San, Sanibel Island, very quaint, little, um, you can ride bicycles, it's a little, um, there's a little grocery store there, um, there's, it's real close to Fort Myers Beach, so if you want nightlife, you can go back out and go to crazy Fort Myers Beach, and then, um, but it's, again, beautiful and stuff there, too. But Sanibel's real, you know, just a real nice place. There's restaurants right on the island, walking distance, and you can get on the beach and stuff there, but as, like I was saying, it's a little pricey as far as if you get one right on the beach. Um, and they go quick, too. So if they're available and you're looking at them online and you're on the fence about whether you should book or not, um, Sanibel's a great experience. So you got Destin, number one, Sanibel, and now Sanibel is going to be more south if you're coming, like, so say if you're in Clearwater, Pinellas County, Hillsborough, um, Sanibel is going to be south of there, closer, like I was saying, to Fort Myers or um, heading towards, like, Sarasota, um, like, heading in that direction or south um, compared to Clearwater and stuff. Um, and again, here we go, Clearwater Beach, number three in the state of Florida. Um, so if you were going to guess what number Clearwater Beach was, it's three. Um, and uh, worldwide, a lot of contests, Clearwater Beach is number one or two. So we're lucky to have Clearwater Beach. Uh, you know, anytime any of your relatives come to town, I think that that's our, you know, whether you're in Pinellas or Hillsborough or Pasco or Hernando, you're going to Clearwater Beach, you know. So if someone comes from out of town, um, that is one of the best beaches that is actually near us and stuff. So, and then talking, we were talking about Sarasota, Number four comes in Naples. Naples um, has a gorgeous beach. Again, it's a little bit more pricey than, um, say, Clearwater Beach hotels. But if you're going on the water and you're going waterfront or you're going beachfront, you're going to be around the same price probably, maybe a little bit more for Naples um, and Sanibel. But these are gorgeous. Um, and you're going to want to, when you go there, you're going to want to look at motels too because there's not just the size skyscraper um, and the same with uh, Sanibel. You want to look at motels um, if you're trying to book there because they're um, Sanibel too, quaint, small places. Destin, you can get a hotel. Clearwater, you can get a big hotel. But when we go to Naples, Sanibel, you're going to want to look at motels too only because, you know, when they first built those places, they had a lot of motels, small, you know, quaint little um, Airbnb, all that. You're going to definitely want to find them on there. St. Pete Beach comes in at number five. St. Pete Beach is beautiful. Um, St. Pete Beach, you can look at motels, you can look at hotels, you can look at pretty much anything you want. St. Pete Beach has it. Gorgeous beach, um, wide open water, you know, just like all the other beaches. But St. Pete Beach, beautiful beach, um, and that got number five. Um, and then when we go back do down, heading towards um, Sanibel, Siesta Key. Um, Siesta Key is right next door to Sanibel. And uh, that one's coming in at number six. Um, and there are white turquoise water. Um, and there's a turtle beach there, too, right on Siesta Key. So that's a gorgeous beach, too. Um, then we got Marco Island. 
Um, so that's gonna, you're gonna be by Naples again, um, and it's accessible by two bridges. So you're kind of, you're gonna be one of those where you're driving and driving, and you're going out and out, and then you get there, and, and it's, it's beautiful. That's, um, that's Siesta Key, Marco Island. Um, so Marco Island, uh, that, like that's the one with Naples. Um, da -da -da -da, overpopulated, yeah. Um, Marco Island, I have never stayed, and of all these beaches, I've stayed at every single one of them. I've never stayed at Marco Island, but I've driven through, and it is beautiful. Um, it has festive, a festive area, restaurants. I mean, all these, air, all these places that I'm mentioning all have seafood restaurants, um, most of them pretty good restaurants as far as the Tampa area. Um, so you're going to be able to f get some shrimp. You're going to be able to have a good time, it, depending on fish, you know, if you like fish and stuff like that. Um, they always had the land land lovers steak or burgers at these places but most people come out when they're when they're looking at the actual beaches and stuff they want to eat like seafood too stay in the the festive mode so okay marco island was seven and then santa rosa beach um again um i want to say the, the next the ones on the bottom of the list here and i had said one through ten but i actually got one through fifteen but when it comes to santa rosa beach um, I have not been, um, and they're saying that that's a great place to body surf, um, and that is going to be uh, 26 miles of northwest coast, so 26 miles of beach there. So Santa Rosa, got to put that on the list. That's at number eight. So um, that looks like awesome. I mean, I have pictures, but you guys don't, so. But, okay, so now we're at number nine. Guess what number nine is? Okay, you're wrong because I didn't know either. Fort Walton Beach. So Fort Walton, um, nothing to do with the Waltons, but Fort Walton is Gulf Coast uh, Beach, and it's by John C. Peasley, John C. Beasley Park, um, located in uh, Akalusa Island. So gosh, that sounds really nice. Um, it's on an island. And then the next couple I have on islands too. So you got... So that was number nine. And then number 10, St. George Island. Um, another, um, that one's going to be more, St. George Island's more towards Tallahassee, so North Florida. So if you just moved here, um, right before you hit, you know, North Florida, like you're going to Mississippi or Georgia, that's going to be North Florida, all of that area in there. Um, and that's basically by Tallahassee, so you're going to be more towards the Alabama, Mississippi side there. Um, and that's St. George Island, 75 miles uh, southwest of Tallahassee. Okay, so I got it. I kind of have it in that vicinity there. Um, number 11 is Isla, Mor Isla Morada. So that's a beautiful place. That's going to be more Isla Morada. Um, that's going to be more um, towards, I want to say, Sanibel. Um, Anne's Beach is calm, quite for, for dogs. Um, it's right off of there, and Holiday Isle Beach um, bars, um, hotels, and amenities. But that's Isla Morada. Oh, actually, no, it's not by Sandoval. It's uh, the Keys. What am I talking about? Yeah. So there is. That's. Um, I've been there too, um, and it, we're actually going to Key West soon here in the next uh, month or so. But um, Key West, um, Isla. Morada, they have these little uh, teeny key areas in each part of Key. The Keys as you're heading towards Key West. Um, and that's one of them, and it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, I had to take a second to remember which where that was. They're all going together. Our, our, basically, we're an island almost anyway, right, Florida? So, but Key West, that one's number 11, um, and that's just a gorgeous, gorgeous area, and that's um, in Jimmy Buffett's song. So if, that's, if it sounds familiar to you, that's why. It's in a couple of those songs. Um, Amelia Island is number 12. So Amelia Island um, is real close to golf, if you like playing golf. Um, and it's um, more towards, Amelia Island's more towards Jacksonville. So again, more north Florida. You're about to hit Georgia, um, you know, that, that area as far as uh, is north Florida. So um, that's Amelia Island there. And Amelia Island got, like I said, number 12 on um, best Florida beaches. So, and then... We got number 13, Panama City Beach. Um, so Panama City, actually, I'm going to Panama City, too. Um, got to meet my bestie, and we're going we're gonna to go hang out in Panama City Beach. So we'll see how that is. And I can give you guys the, whether it's the thumbs up or the thumbs down on that one. But hey, if it made this list, it must be on the thumbs up. Because we were between Destin, 
um, and Panama City Beach, which on the scale, basically Destin bypassed Panama City Beach by far. So um, this one um, has Shell Island, a 700 acre uh, barrier island that is known for a large pop population of bottlenose dolphins. So, um, but that one, you know, if you're, if you have friends in another state and you're in Florida, that's a nice area to meet, kind of meet halfway if, um, you know, she's basically, she's coming from South Carolina. So we are here, you know, in um, west coast of Florida. So we figure it take us six hours to drive there, take her six hours to drive. So we're all meeting, you know, there. Um, so that's a nice central location. And um, you know what's not on here is, uh, let me see. No, it's not on here. Oh, here is dry tortigas. Um, so you got the dry tortigas for that is number 14. And then I was just going to say, where's Key West? Key West, number 15. So again, like we were talking about Key West, um, we're actually going to Key West. It's beautiful there. Um, it's more commercialized these days than it you know, was before uh, when the first Jimmy Buffett songs came out. But um, it's a beautiful area. It has, has um, you know, again, it looks like an island when you're, when you're there. It has a lot of tourists, different things to do, um, lighthouses to go to. You know, just um, a lot of older stuff and um, older brick streets, stuff like that. Um, of course, it has all your tourist site stuff with your, um, you know, uh, like your shirts and your backpacks and your hats and all that stuff. And then every one of these that um, pretty much I, that's on this list has those shops. You know, you can go even, um, you know, some beaches that aren't on here that are really good are, you know, Daytona Beach is a beautiful white sandy beach. Again, um, has all the different shops and the, you know, for um, tourist stuff. So you can, you can literally go to Clearwater Beach and get a Clearwater Beach shirt and then drive 30 minutes to, or 20 minutes to St. Pete Beach and get a St. Pete Beach shirt and, and vice versa and get all the same exact shirt at all the stores. But um, that's the one thing when you live in Florida, you do start to recognize all of our tourist stuff. So you hardly see Floridians wearing the Clearwater Beach shirts because we're so used to, seeing them, you know. So you don't see people in Pasco County wearing Newport Ritchie shirts or Hudson Beach shirts normally. Um, but, you know, we are, we are loving our beaches. Um, but there's a lot of tourist stuff. Not tourist traps, but kind of, you know, you have all your, the different shops and stuff there. But there's so much to do when you get to the beach. Um, I know because we're close to Clearwater Beach, um, there's even an inside, um, if you want to go surfing, they have like simulated surfing there. Um, inside, because you know our coast, we don't have a lot of um, waves to actually surf. Um, if you go to the other coast, um, you know we have. If you go to Fort Lauderdale, um, Daytona, they have more surf. And of course, if hurricanes come in, you always see the crazy people out there trying to surf. The reason is on this side, we don't have the waves to get us. You know, you can um, you can go out there on like maybe a boogie board or something like that or a paddle board, but we don't have the big, um, huge waves like they do on the other coast. Uh, but we do have the tourist attractions. Like I was saying, Clearwater Beach, we have the simulated waves. So you can go on a board. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I'm kind of accident prone. And so I have not tried that one. But it does look fun. You know, my, my daughters have tried it. Um, and it's it looks, you know, it does look fun for them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, it, it is fun and stuff. But um, but on Clearwater Beach, you have just different restaurants and stuff like that. Again, if you haven't gone and you moved to Florida or you're thinking about moving to Florida, these are the reasons to go. Um, you know, the beaches, if you're, you know, you're getting your sunshine. Um, but if you don't, if you don't like to get fried in the sun, you know, bring it, obviously bring your towels, but bring umbrellas, put your sunscreen on. Um, and then you can walk around. There's uh, all sort, sorts of uh, restaurants um, and shops and just different things. There's Hooters. There's even McDonald's. Most of these uh, places have, um, except for like Sanibel is going to have smaller restaurants um, and stuff like that. But most of these on this list, you know, the Keys, um, all, they're going to have, you know, pretty good sized restaurants. Um, you're not going to have, you know, um, huge uh, I want to say Publix. Everybody's looking for a Publix. St. Pete Beach has a Publix. Um, Clearwater has a Publix. As you go through, um, there's a there is a um, Santa Barbara Island has a um, grocery store. It's not a Publix, but you usually see Publix close or some type of grocery store as you're in these areas. So if you don't want to go to restaurants every day, you don't have to. You can actually, you know, it's not like you're leaving um, captivity 
and you're going out to these, you know, there, there are places that have restaurants and, and grocery stores and everything. So um, you'll be safe and you'll be um, okay on food and stuff like that. But I always suggest before you get there to buy your, buy your uh, suntan lotion ahead of time because when you get out there, your bottle of suntan lotion that's five bucks is going to be ten bucks when you get out there. Bring your towels unless you want one that says, you know, like we we're saying, Sanibel Island or Clearwater Beach on it because, again, everything will be doubled once you get out there as far as if it has the name on it for tourist, you know, tourist stuff like that and Key West. Um, but you can always, if you lose your sunglasses, you can always get sunglasses out at any of these places um, and, you know, sunglasses, towels, um, just pretty much everything. So, and if you do go, make sure you take lots of, front, uh, lots of pictures because your friends are going to be very envious. Um, but there's also, like I was saying, you know, these did not make the list, but they're St. Augustine. Uh, I just went there. It has beautiful water all the way around it. Um, you know, there's lots of things to see as far as um, you have forts, you have little, you know, streets, looks like a little ghost town. There's old, the oldest schoolhouse there. Um, Boca Raton, Vero Beach, Delray Beach, Palm Beach, um, Key Largo, um, Fort Lauderdale, all those those other beaches, um, that's what they write the music on. I think we've all heard some songs about Key Largo, you know, all the different beaches and stuff that we have. Um, so you guys definitely should visit them. And like I said, take lots of pictures, put it on your social media, get your other friends to move here and let them buy a house from me. That's a great idea. So anyway, we're going to take a quick a uh, quick break again, and I want to talk to you guys about some amazing um, things to do and adventures in Florida, um, and actually some, uh, to tell you guys, some adventure that I had this weekend, some new rides, uh, Bush Gardens, and so you guys just stay tight for a couple seconds, and I'll be right back. I'm going to throw up my information, which has my Instagram, my Facebook, my website, and phone number if you guys are buying or selling, um, give me a call. And if you're looking, I can obviously hook you up with some properties that haven't even hit the MLS yet. Uh, also, special thanks to Nightberry Title Services for always sponsoring me and um, giving good information as well. Um, thanks, Cheryl, for joining me last week. And um, everybody stay tuned. I'm going to just tell you guys about some different places that you might not know if you just moved here or if you're on the fence of moving here of where to go. So stay tight. Welcome back. I'm Jesse Walters with Charles Ruttenberg. I'm um, here today just talking about um, listings I have coming up. And um, we just talked about the best beaches in Florida, uh, making sure you guys go and visit them. And then also my favorite thing to do, amusement parks, um, things to places to visit in Florida. So some of them I'm sure you've heard of, like Disney World, obviously. Um, we all go to Disney World um, or we, you know, if you have kids, um, they want you to go to Disney World. So uh, if you haven't been to Disney World and uh, you can actually turn into a child, if you do actually go there and enjoy yourself and smile and have a good time and pretend like you are, you know, a kid and stuff. So it's, it's pretty fun. Um, it's pretty pricey these days, but um, it's less, you know, busy than it was before, you know, obviously COVID and stuff. But amusement parks are great because you're outside most of the time. Um, so if you do have any anxiety about COVID, you're, you know, most of the time you're walking around. So if you do, um, we're going to go over a list. And if you do go, make sure you have good walking shoes on. And again, sunblock. See, I'm sound like your mom now. Uh, make sure you got your sunblock. Make sure you got your water. Um, a lot of those uh, places are going to make you uh, purchase the water inside. Um, each amusement park's a little different, but um, so if you're going to Disney World, 
you're going to go, um, you're going to be in Orlando area. Um, if you're in Tampa, it's probably going to take you, um, depending on where you are in Tampa, an hour to, you know, to hour and a half. If you're in Pasco, about two hours. If you're in Hernando, about two hours to get to Disney World. Um, there's lots of different places to stay. There are lots of different resort areas, which kind of look like Disney World too. There's even the Nickelodeon um, Hotel, which is really fun for kids. If it's if your if your kids having a birthday, um, and it's say they're you know it's not the big birthday like five or one, say they're turning six or seven. Um, if you take them and a friend to the Nickelodeon um, Hotel, that's an awesome hotel, um, and it looks. You know, it's a lot of fun and stuff for the kids. It has games in the, the rooms and the outside. Um, and, the you know, the actual pool area looks like something out of a movie or Disney World area. So that's, that's real nice. Um, so when we were talking about water parks in the Orlando area, um, it's starting to get a little bit colder for us Floridians. But if you're from up north, uh, the parks are still open. You got Blizzard Beach, which is a, a real nice um, water park area for them um, and if you've gone which I've gone there before it's pretty cool looking um, it's uh, definitely where are the kids out they'll be sleeping all night if you take them there but um, if you go to Disney World and you put one day as a water park day um, your, your kids will really like that or if you're a big kid you really like that too so there's um, in Dis in Orlando area um, so you have like Disney, you have Disney World resorts themselves. You can get packages and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm a realtor just telling you about the areas. I'm not trying to sell you a resort package, but sometimes you can get a better price if you get the ticket and the resort and everything together, but price check everything. Um, also, they do have the Airbnbs there, but you, there's lots of hotels and stuff to stay at. So there's Universal Islands of, uh, Islands of Adventure. If you make it over to the Orlando area, um, you'll, you'll definitely have some fun there. And um, they have these things. If you haven't been there yet, they're called Fast Passes. Um, you can get so many per day. You put your ticket in, tell you when to come back. Um, and that's at a lot of the Orlando Disney World um, you know, those actual uh, amusement parks, they have the fast pass, something to check into. You can also purchase one ahead of time with like an upgraded fast pass, um, but they'll say you're allowed to get so many fast passes a day. But um, again, check into that. And then you have, uh, if you're in Orlando, there's Disney's Animal Kingdom. And there's also Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge too. So if your kids really, you know, or you or someone really likes animals, um, and you're really into um, the animal kingdom, you can actually go to the actual, the lodge part of it, to, you know, to the actual too. Um, there's so much to do in Orlando that there's even, um, one of my favorite things to do is that um, Mario and Dreddy, uh, they have go-kart track and they have uh, one for adults and one for children. Uh, if you're an adult child, such as I am, um, you may get asked not to come back on the children, you know, uh, Golf, golf car, the golf cart experience if you smash the little kids out of the way, which I don't suggest anyone to do. But I went with my um, stepdaughter and uh, they told me to go on the big track because I was driving too aggressively, which, but you can, you can though. I mean, it sounds like I'm crazy, but when you guys get there and you drive on that thing, you'll, you'll see. So that's really fun. Um, it's inside track. And like I said, there's one for, there's one for kids. There's one for adults. There's all um, inside game room. There's a place where the kids can do, um, you know, where they hang and they, they walk up um, in this actual, um, as the go-kart tracks are in this other section, they can um, walk up, you know, if they don't have fewer heights, they can actually do like a little ropes course. And, and for adults too, there's a bar area in it. So it's kind of something for everybody. It's a fun, it's a fun experience. So if you go to Disney World one day, but you don't feel like going and waiting and all the parks and stuff, you can go to um, the Mario Andretti experience, and you'll have a really good time there. Um, so anyway, there's also another uh, splash park there is Universal Volcano Bay. Um, again, it's, it's cold for us, but not for you guys. Um, so you got the Cabana Bay Beach Resort, too. Um, you got Disneywood Holly, Hollywood Studios. Um, a lot of guys in here like Star Wars. They have the Star Wars Galaxy Edge in that. Um, and then we have Disney Arts of Animation Resort. Now these, so that you have your, you have your places you can go and places you can stay. So if you uh, want to go and you love Star Trek, you can also go 
to find the actual place to stay at, which is Star Trek themed and stuff too. So it's kind of cool if it's somebody's special's birthday. We're like, you know, like we were saying and stuff, or like I was saying. Um, so you got your, you got Orlando. You've also, also as far as the Tampa Bay area, we have Bush Gardens. Um, we did go there this weekend, and um, there was a new ride called the Tigress. It was fantastic. If you like roller coasters, um, I was just explaining it to to a friend, and and basically you sit in a you sit, they strap you in, and you go forward at like, I want to say it felt like 100 miles an hour, but it's probably, I don't know, it's probably 60, but um, you go forward, and then um, so many feet, like probably 50 feet, and then it um, it jerks you back, and so the people are waiting for the, for the ride. It takes you back through there at like, I want to say 100 miles an hour, then it shoots you back out again, and it's, um, it's really great, especially if you go front row. It's a great experience, and you'll have a lot of fun there, but that's Bush Gardens. They have a couple new rides there, and a couple that are opening soon. Um, I think 2022 has a brand new, um, I forget the name of it, but a brand new ride coming out, and if you like, um, uh, you know, roller coasters, you're definitely going to have a good time there, um, and they also have that one, um, what's it called, the Kraken? Um, it's a wooden roller coaster. They're redoing that one. Um, it's been, you know, they've been redoing that one for quite a while now. And um, that one will be open soon, too. That might be the one that's in 2022. But that's Tampa, um, and that's called Bush Gardens. Next to Bush Gardens, there's uh, Adventure Island, which is a water park, which is kind of, it's great if you're from Clearwater, if you're from Pasco, Porichi, Por New Porichi, Hudson, um, Hernando, Adventure Island's a great place to go with your kids. You can bring um, a picnic with you, or they have food and stuff there. Um, they do have adult beverages, too. Um, they have a, a play center for little ones, and that's a, that's a great um, experience. And they, Bush Gardens and Adventure Island have passes, just like um, Disney does, too. Uh, but you can get a year pass where you go. Um, you pay like a monthly fee or you pay like for it all at one time. Um, they have the pay once, go all year. Um, and they also have the, the double pass, which Bush Gardens and Adventure Island it has both parks on there, which um, includes the parking and stuff like that. So those passes, um, if you're an actual Florida resident, you get a great deal on those passes and you can go back. And if your kids are bored at home during summer, you can go back, some, you know, um, the, uh, during the week as many times as you want. There's some, there's some um, fine line on the weekends with those passes, though, so be careful if you're trying to get to a party on a Saturday or Sunday. Um, on Disney, and I'm not sure, but on Busch Gardens, Adventure Island, passes won't cover you on Saturdays and Sundays, but they will cover you Monday through Friday, I believe. But check the, check the fine print, you know, um, depending. If you're just going for fun, it doesn't matter, but if you're, if you're trying to get to a birthday party, maybe on a Saturday, um, just check those passes and stuff too. Um, in in a, in actually a Tampa Bay area, we have the Hard Rock Cafe, kind of an amusement park for older people. <laughs> if you like to spend money or waste money, that's the best place for you to go. Um, those hotel rooms, though, I want to say they start around through. 250 to 500 don't quote me on that that's just approximate but it's not a um, going to be a inexpensive stay for you it's going to be you're going to be spending money hopefully winning but you're also going to be at those hotels are going to be um, depending if it's the weekend obviously it's more and if you're booking so say you're trying to book say it's uh, you know Monday and you're trying to book for Saturday it's going to be more expensive than if you book a couple of months out or if you book during a high um, traffic area. Um, but there, we have lots of concerts in the Tampa Bay area, too. Raymond James is um, strategically located right next to the Hard Rock Cafe. So if you want to go to a concert and it ends at 10 and you're a night owl, you can step across to the Hard Rock um, and then, you know, gamble or hang out and then even spend the night there and stuff. So it's like a uh, like a smaller excursion, but it's still something fun to do if in the Tampa Bay area, um, if it's a special night or your birthday or something like that. Uh, if you don't like to gamble, you can always just go to Bush Gardens, and they have all sorts of different things. Um, they have, they have um, right now Christmas is coming up, so they're going to have Christmas uh, type themes and. Uh, they'll have wine tasting and beer tasting and different tents like that open um, and different shows and stuff over there at Bush Gardens too. So if you're in Tampa Bay area, um, that's a, that's fun, you know, fun places to go. There's also other um, 
venues which have concerts. So we have Ruth Eckerd Hall in the Palm Harbor, Clearwater, Safety Harbor area. Um, Ruth Eckerd Hall is a nice, um, a nice area. They have VIP passes. Um, if you if you like to donate, um, a lot of they have a lot of donate um, uh, for these passes, like donations, and then you get a pass, and you'll get cheaper tickets or you know different offers. But you can check into all these different things if you plan on going back, or if you go there once, check it out, and you want to go back again. Um, but I know they had like Willie Nelson. We saw at Ruth Eckerd Hall. Um, it was a great experience. Nice parking in and out. Uh, you know, you're just, it's a, it's, you know, like I said, strategically located to so your US 19, but it's off of McMullen Booth. So you're kind of running the same way as like the Suncoast and the US 19, it's, but it's McMullen Booth. So it's a night, nice, it's an easy area to get to and stuff. That's Ruth Eckerd Hall for concerts. A lot of smaller concerts. They had the uh, prices right there too. Um, I took my mom to the prices right. Um, she loved it. We were not winners. Uh, we were losers, but we, we all sat together, had a good time, and we um, we had the Price is Right shirts on and all that stuff. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, they have a lot of different fun experiences, and you can get, you know, snacks and food on your way in, stuff like that. So if you're looking for things to do, of course, this time of year is the best time of year for just different things you can do. Um, this weekend, they have Safety Harbor has um, wine um, I want to say Wine Tasting Wine Festival in Safety Harbor, Florida, which is right off of McMullen Booth. That's on Saturday, but always, you know, Google and verify my, the, my information, but it's Saturday, and Safety Harbor is a nice little, beautiful little town. Um, if you're familiar with this area, it's kind of like Dunedin, you know, kind of like our hidden little gyms, um, you know, Dunedin, and, um, and you know, it's not, wasn't on my beach list, was um, Honeymoon Island, which is kind of shocking, Caladesi Island, those are beautiful beaches, but, um, so you've got, so if you're in Pinellas County and you haven't checked out um, Dunedin, you know, they have art shows, craft shows this time of year. Um, check Google Dunedin and look for um, art shows. And then if you like wine and you want to do wine tasting, Google uh, Safety Harbor for this weekend, which would be um, November uh, 5th, 6th. And that, you know, in there, I want to say it's the uh, 6th, it's November 6th, the wine tasting. But, I mean, it's a great time to walk around um, and actually see that, too. So you have all these different things to do in, on this side, this, this side of Florida, and then, of course, Orlando area. Um, there's so many things to do in Florida, which is great. You know, that's where they say... Um, you know, you come vacation here, but we live here. And I think sometimes we take Florida for granted. We just get into our own, you know, going to work, coming home, that we forget to take time to literally smell the roses. Um, you know, think some of the things that we can do that don't cost any money, you know, everything I mentioned costs money, but on the beaches, they don't, you know. So unless, unless there's parking at, say, Clearwater Beach, um, I want to say that's um, close to, I want to say it's like 15 to 30 bucks now, but um, you're going to go like to Dunedin Beach. You can pull right up on the causeway. Um, you can hang out there. You can park your car. You can bring your own lunch. That's free. Fred Howard Park in Tarpon Springs. Um, you can, you know, have a picnic. There's places you can grill in the park area. You can bring a ball, play ball with your kids. Um, that's Fred Howard Park. Um, and then there's the beach at the end of it. Um, that's all free. Of course, there is rentals for um, if you want to. There's there's boats out there, paddle boards you can rent. Um, if you you know if you want to do more stuff with your kids, or you can bring that stuff yourself, and and then let you put it in there. Um, Fred Howard Park's actually in the beach. There is actually where I learned to scuba dive. My dad took a tank and put it on my back and sent me out in the water, and um, I don't know if that was the best way to teach me to scuba dive, but that's how I learned to scuba dive at Fred Howard Park. There's no, you know, if you want to do something crazy like that, you're welcome to there. Bring your own paddle boards or your own uh, windsurfer um, or sailboats. You can, there's no place to actually take your boat to uh, to dock it out there, but if you have a um, the wind, the sails, they have the uh, the boards out there all the time, um, the sail boards and stuff like that. Uh, but not, but don't take an actual boat and put it in. Um, but if you're looking and you have a boat or you want to rent a boat, um, that's another thing you can do. You can rent a boat. You can take it out to Anclote Island. Um, you can call the just Google boat rentals depending on which county you're in. And you can take it out. Um, they'll have the boat all ready for you. Um, and again, in Florida, we have boat clubs. We have boat clubs where 
Um, you don't want to own a boat because you don't want to fix a boat. Everybody says the best day and the worst day of buying a boat is buying a boat and selling a boat um, because you, you're you basically just throwing money in. Um, there's boat clubs, which I'm not advertising for them, but there's boat clubs. You pay approximately $4,000 down. You pay 300 um, to three, 300 to 400 a month, and you can go um, different places in Florida. And you pull up, you pay for your gas, they have the boat ready for you, um, the boat's there, there's some nice people and uh, that, that with these boat clubs, had the boat already, you bring your food, you pay for the gas. When it's done after four hours, you bring your boat back. You book these days, you bring the boat back, and uh, they take the boat. You don't have to clean the boat. You don't have to do anything else. So, I mean, I don't know what's better because I've had a boat before, and but I've never done the boat club. So I don't know if all of a sudden it's like a new, a new boat. You get sick of it. You don't do it anymore, but you can pick all sorts of different types of boats and everything. So there's so much to do in Florida. If you're not an outside person, there's art, uh, art shows, art galleries you can go to, Mosey. Museum is all inside and air conditioned um, if you don't like to go outside. Um, but there's lots of inside activities too with air conditioned, beautiful malls and stuff like that. I want to say in the Tampa Bay area, we have it all here. Um, you know, so if you're thinking about moving here and you're on the fence, if you have kids, there's a lot to keep them busy inside and outside. So uh, I want to say you're making the, you know, a great uh, choice to live in the Tampa Bay area. And um, I want to do restaurants next time. I want to actually ha make my husband take me to all these restaurants so I can actually give 100% great experience at whether it was a good restaurant, too. So um, if you guys are buying or selling, give me a call. My information is going to be up. And if you have any questions about my new listings, um, email me or text me or give me a call, and I'll be glad to help. All right, you guys have a great day. Thanks.